Shalom, 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 brothers and sisters out there. Uh, we're here once again, Glory Light Ministries, uh, spreading the gospel of Christ. Today, we're going to start a series here called, When Will the End Be? So we're going to do a study on Matthew 24, when the disciples went up on the Mount of Olives, and they asked three questions. So we're going to take a few weeks, this is part one of it, to break down what that means. And we're going to correlate what's going on, what happened then, and what's going on now in the world. All right. So as usual, we're going to start off with our Shema, and we're going to say the Lord's Prayer, and then we're going to dive right in. So everybody stretch their hands ready to receive. Shema Yasha Allah Ahaya. Allah Haya Nawa Ahaya Aka. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Abanawa, Shaba Shemayim, Kodesh Haya Shemka, Ahaya Malakwatka, Tabaa, Ratazawan Ka Haya Isha, Ba Arataza Kawa Haya Ba Shemayim. Latan la nawa lacham kao wayam wa salak nawa cha wath nawa ka salak nawa cha awav ya nawa wala a taba a ya nawa ba nas wayam abal hawash nawa man ra kaya laka ha malakuth waha ala waha ta paraf la ayanyam aman. Amen. And without further ado, we're going to dive right in. When will the end be? We're going to discuss end time because that's what we end. And no better time to discuss it than now so that we can get a better understanding because some people don't believe it. Some people don't believe that the end is not near. It's here. We're living in it. I truly believe that this is the last generation. If you read your Bible, you'll understand exactly where, where I'm coming from. So let's get right into the commentary as we normally do here. All right, let me share a screen here and so that we can all read this together. And as usual, we got some great visuals. So I want you to Shema, O Israel. Shema. Deuteronomy 6 and 4. Shema means listen. And you know what? That don't cost a dime for us to pay attention and listen. So when will the end be? This is the breakdown of Matthew, the 24th chapter, part one. All right. So let's dive right into our commentary here. There we go. So an interesting discussion is recorded in Matthew 24. And chapter 25, Matthew wrote in Matthew 24 and 21, let's go to the first precept of the day. Let's go to Matthew, the book of Matthew. And let's go to chapter 24 and let's read verse one. Now we're going to take it from the beginning because we're going to do this in a series. We're going to break down chapter 24 so that we can get a better understanding of the three questions that the disciples asked Yahushua on the Mount of Olives. Before he ascended. So let's turn to Matthew chapter 24 and verse 1. Now let's read it. Then Yahushua went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came up to show him the building of the temple. All right. So we're going to start from square one here. All right. So this is right before the temple was destroyed. Before everything happened with. Yahushua and, and then with Pontius Pilate and him being crucified and, you know, flogged and everything. So we're going all the way back to the beginning to Matthew 24, chapter 1. Let's read it again. Then Yahushua went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. Luke gave a little more detail when he reported. So now. Matthew saying this, let's turn to Luke chapter 21 and verse 5. 
we're going to take our time with this series. It's going to be several parts, 13 of them to be exact. Short intervals, but very effective. Let's turn to Luke chapter 21 and verse 5. We're doing a breakdown of Matthew chapter 24. The three questions that the disciples asked Yahushua before all the trouble started. When will the end be? Now, let's read what Luke said. In chapter 21 and verse 5. One moment. Remember, we get there one page at a time. Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. So we'll take our time and we'll break this down. Now, this is what Luke said. This is what he reported. Luke chapter 21, verse 5 says, Then, as some spoke of the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and donations, he said, These things which you see, the days will come, and which not one stone shall be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. I studied the weight and the sizes of these stones that they used to build that temple. All right, now let's get into the second bullet point because we're going to make this short but effective because we have 13 parts to this Bible study. Now, now that we read the account from Matthew, all right, so let's read Matthew again. Let's go back to Matthew, and we're going to compare the two. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 1, because this is where it all starts. Let's read Matthew 24 and 1 again, so we can understand where we're starting from. Verse 1 says, Now Yahushua went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Yahushua said to them, Do you not see all these things? Or surely I say to you, Not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now the temple was beautiful, everybody. But can you imagine what they were doing in it? As you can remember, Yahushua had to go in at some point in time and turn over the tables because it was gambling. It was doing all types of things in this temple. And when I read this verse, it reminds me of our temple and what we do to it, what we put in it. You know, we continue to eat unclean meat, things that the Most High told us not to eat. We continue to do these things. Now, this building temple, he said it would not be one stone that would not be thrown down. So this is where the parable starts. Let's get back to the commentary. Let's dive into the commentary here so we can set the tone for these 13 parts here. Second bullet point. To get a full understanding of the discussion. The discussion that we're talking about is the discussion with Yahushua and the disciples on the Mount of Olives. To get a full understanding of the discussion, one has to understand the events immediately preceding it. Yahushua had just said, see, your house is left to you desolate. For I say to you, you shall see me no more till you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Now, let's, let's go to the precept. Proceed, which means this is what he said before all of these things happen. So let's backtrack. Before we get into Matthew 24, let's read what he said in chapter 23, verses 38 and 39. He says, see, your house is left to you desolate, for, you, for I say to you, shall see me no more till you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Whose name are you coming in? Let's get into this study. All right. The disciples likely wondered how Yah 
could leave such a beautiful temple empty. So this is what's going on in their mind. Hmm. No way this is going to be destroyed because this is one beautiful place. Let's read on. Josephus says the temple was made of green. Now this is from the Antiquities of the Jews. Josephus was a Jewish scholar back then. And this is what he wrote in that. Just Josephus says the temple was made of green and white marble blocks. 67 foot by 5 foot by 6 foot. That's huge. One stone. So one stone was 67 foot. Maybe either wide or tall. Either way it goes. That's huge. And it weighed up to 100 tons. So the disciples said to themselves, how is this going to be destroyed? Hmm. Who's going to destroy this? Let's keep reading. And then we're going to get to the important bullet point in just a minute. I'm trying to set the tone here, starting with the temple. And then we're going to get into the question that the disciples asked. Let's read. The back of the temple stood on Mount Morar. And was 600 foot tall. The front was covered with heavy gold plates. The Jews thought they were protected. They thought they were protected by the presence of the temple. This is what they thought. You see the idolatry. And all of the things are starting to add up now. You see. You can't continue to do things without consequences. There are going to be consequences. And Yahushua said there would not be one stone left unturned. You see, when enough is enough, you know when enough is enough because things start happening. It didn't matter if the temple was beautiful. Yah was tired of it, what's going on in the inside of it. And this goes the same thing for our bodies. Because we are the temple of Yah. And this is a parable. Starting in chapter 23, 38, 39, rolling over to chapter 24, then getting into the three questions that the disciples asked Yahusha, when will the end be? Well, that's a very important question that we need to answer. That we're going to answer in 13 parts during this series. Let's get back to the commentary. Very important message today. Next bullet point. Yet Yahushua answered, do you not see all these things? But surely I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. We read that Matthew 24 and verse 2. Luke's parallel account gives a little more insight in the Lord's words. Let's go there. So we'll go back and forth from Mark to Luke. Luke chapter 21 and verse 6. We're going to get into the message in just a second. I'm trying to set the tone about the temple because this is how it all started. Before the questions were asked to the Messiah, when will the end be? All right, so now let's look at Luke's account, his insight. Luke chapter 21 and verse 6. Here we go. This is what it says. These things which you see, the days will come in which not one stone shall be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. Verse 7. So they asked him, saying, Teacher, but when will these things be? And what sign will there be when these things are about to take place? You see, we have people asking the same thing. When will the end be? What will be the signs? Well, you know what? Doing this study, it's just going to be like handwriting on the wall. I'm going to show you the signs then that never stopped. 
And we're going to compare them to the signs now that he told us in chapter 24. He already told us what to look for, and they're right in our faces. Some people don't believe that we're living in the end. Some people think, hey, I got time to get myself together. Well, you know what? You do. And the time is right now, this minute, this day, this hour, this second, this moment. Seize it. Because there will never be an earth like this one again. All this jubilancy is going away. Either you serve Yah or you serve Satan. Remember, I always say this. There's no in-between. There is no in-between. Back to the commentary. Very effective point today, and I need everybody to pay attention here. Let's read on. Imagine the shock of the disciples. As a result of the shock, the disciples approached the Lord in private on the Mount of Olives. Now, here we go. They approached them in shock. Now, I want to know what's going on. I need to ask the teacher, hey, what do you mean by that? It shook them up. Now, let's go to Matthew 24 and let's read verse 3. Let's read verse 3. Let's set the tone of this Bible study for the next 13 weeks, 13 parts. It says, verse 3 says, Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, and he is capital, which means this is Yahushua, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us when these things will be, and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age. Now let's read the commentary. First they ask, tell us, one, tell us, when will these things be? They follow it with, and what will be the sign of your coming? And finally they ask, and what will be the sign of the end of the age? Don't you want to know? Are you lining up? Are you shemaying? To be able to understand these signs when you read them or when you see them? Very important. They ask those questions then. These three questions are still relevant, brothers and sisters. Still relevant. But do not fear. Now, let's read on. Now, now we're getting into the meat and potatoes. Or what this series is all about. Signs of the beginning of sorrows. All right. First thing I want to do. Is show some visual. All right. I'm going to play this video. I'm going to share this video with you. Because these are the signs of the beginning of sorrows. The tribulation that you may call it. Starting with Matthew chapter 24 and verse 4. Now listen to this video. Listen up. And you tell me where we at with these three questions. One moment. Let's pull up the video here and cue it up. I got to give you something to think about. Something to see here. One moment. Very short clip. Not long at all. But this is going to set the tone for the rest of these Bible studies. All right, here we go. Look and behold a pale horse, and its rider's name was Death, and Hades followed him. And they were given authority over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, and with famine, and with pestilence, and by wild beasts of the earth. There's something strange about the coronavirus outbreak, and the way it's currently spreading around the world like an uncontrolled wildfire. We all know that reality is not what it seems, and oftentimes, the truth ends up getting buried under a mountain of lies. You see, 
this outbreak of the coronavirus was not unexpected at all. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, Whoever reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or there, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. See, I have told you beforehand. Therefore, if they say to you, look, he is in the desert, do not go out. Or look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For wherever the carcass is, there, the eagles will be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven, with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors assuredly i say to you this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place heaven and earth will pass away but my words will by no means pass away but of that day and hour no one knows not even the angels of heaven but my father only but as the days of noah were so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. 
Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, My master is delaying his coming, and begins to beat his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him, and at an hour that he is not aware of, and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. We should not be scared. We should not fear this. Why? Because the Bible tells us, quote, You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, the plague that stalks in the darkness, or the calamity that destroys at noon. Though a thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, no harm will come to you. All right. This is a perfect example here. When will the end be? And the this, this was the whole chapter read to you. The beginning of sorrows. You got to ask yourself, out of all the things that he told his disciples on the Mount of Olives, been happening. You got to ask yourself, remember, Yahushua comes like a thief in the night. Well, you're going to be ready. This is very important information that we have to take the time and shema. Repent, turn, change, and refocus yourself on the thing that really matters, your salvation, not the world, not what people think of you, but the signs been here. They've been in our face. Let's get back to the commentary because now we're going to collaborate on a little of this here. Matthew 24, the breakdown. Little bit at a time. That was the whole chapter read. So now we're going to get into the breakdown part of it. All right. The signs of the beginning of sorrows. That visual pretty much sums it all. So now we're going to talk about it for a few through the bullet points. All right, here we go. The disciples may have viewed this as one question with three parts. All right. In their minds, something cataclysmic enough to leave the temple in such a state would surely only come at the end of the world. That's what they thought. No, no, no. That was the beginning of the sorrows. You see, because Christ was still here when they asked the question. Those three questions. Let's get into it. Let's keep reading. Yahushua answered, answered it as two questions with two parts each. He gave signs of the beginning of sorrows. The first one was of those who would try to deceive. Let's read it. We're going to get into each one of these parts doing this Bible study. All right? So now let's read chapter 24 and verse 4. And Yahushua answered to them and said to them, first one, take heed 
that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and would deceive many. So that's one. Okay. Many will come in his name saying he were Christ and deceive many. All right. Let's keep reading. Specifically with the Hebrews looking for a Messiah to lead them in conquest over Rome, the deceivers would claim to be Christ. Now we just read Matthew 24 and 5. Let's read it again. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. This is the first thing that Yahushua said to watch out for. All right. Now. Let's take a break. Let's, we're going to do these two men here that I got in the commentary. And then I have a video of the now. So these two men that we're about to read about, the two men, the Judas and the Egyptian, are mentioned in the book of Acts as having done precisely what Yahushua said they would do. All right. So now these two men. Back then, claimed to be the Messiah, claimed to be Christ. Let's go to Acts chapter 5 and verse 36. And this is where you hear about this guy, the Judas. All right, let's go to the book of Acts. So now Yahushua said, first, what did he say? Be careful. Let no one deceive you. Take heed that no one deceive you. Many will come in my name saying they are the Christ and will deceive many. This is the first thing that he told the disciples on the Mount of Olives to watch out for. That was the first sign. Has this not been happening? It happened then with these two men, a guy named Theudas and an Egyptian guy that came claiming to be someone. So let's look into, into Theudas, Acts chapter 5 and verse 36. Who is this guy? What did he do? Hmm. Christ said, watch out for those who come in my name, saying that they are the Christ and would deceive many. This is what he said. This was the first beginning of sorrows for the earth. Acts chapter 5 and verse 36. Let's go to it. And it reads, For well, some time ago, the Judas rose up, Claiming to be somebody. A number of men, about 400, joined him. He was slain, and all who obeyed him were scattered and came to nothing. You see? So he rose up, claiming to be someone. You know, claiming to be the Messiah. Claiming to be Christ. And he also had followers behind him. Over 400 of them. This was back then. You see, now, and, and also in the book, Acts, this is New Testament, Acts chapter 21 and verse 38 speaks of an Egyptian rising up to be someone like a Christ, like a Messiah. Because we're going to touch bases on all 13 points in the signs in, the, in Matthew chapter 24, one part at a time. So now let's go to Acts 21. Verse 38, and let's read about the Egyptian. Verse 38, here we go. So this is the question. Are you not the Egyptian who some time ago stirred up a rebellion and led the 4,000 assassins out into the wilderness? Now, I could segue into another uh, topic, who the assassins were and what they call them now, modern day, but we're not going to get into that. We're going to stick with the signs of sorrows, the beginning of sorrows. One, Yahushua said, what did he say? He said, let's go back to it. Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. This is the first one. So we read about this guy back then named Theudas, an Egyptian guy. Now, the scripture doesn't give his name, but we know that uh, uh, 
he had the same amount of people to leave with him, uprise with him, and go out into the wilderness. All right. So back then, those sorrows was happening then, and they still happening to this day. So before we segue into the to now, let's get a little bit more information about Thehudas and Theudas and who he was in the Bible. Bullet point. The Judas is mentioned once in the Bible in Acts chapter 5. The Judas was a false messiah seen by the Romans as an insurrectionary and a troublemaker. The Judas was one of a long line of false messiahs that Yahushua warned about in Mark chapter 13 and verse 6. Let's pull it out. You see, he already warned us about these people. He warned us in Matthew chapter 24 and then Mark in the book of Mark chapter 13, he warned us. Let's pull it out. Mark chapter 13 and verse 6. Let's read it. 13 and verse 6. Here we go. And it says, for many will come in my name saying, I am he. And will deceive many. You see, Mark saying the same thing, same account. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, all of them are saying the same thing. The Judas was one of a long line of false messiahs that Yahushua warned about. Mark 13 and 6. Just another place in the Bible that you can find it. The Judas promoted himself as something when in reality he was nothing. He probably gathered a following based on a promise to reconquer the promised land. The popular idea of the time that being that the Messiah would overthrow Rome. So this was the thing to do then. You see? Next bullet point. The, the Judas claimed a power that he never possessed. Now check this out. Yahushua publicly showed his power on many occasions. Let's go to John. Quick Bible study on the first point. When he says, take heed and let no one deceive you. It's a bunch of deceivers out there. These are the beginning of sorrows. John chapter 11. In verse 47, see, Yahushua showed his power publicly, and it was written down. John chapter 11 and verse 47. Let's pull out the precept. Let's see what the Bible says. John chapter 11 and verse 47. Then the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered a council and said, What shall we do? For this man works many signs. Now listen to this, verse 48. If we let him alone like this, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and take away both our place and nation. You see, Yahushua is the real deal. He's the real Messiah. The real Messiah told us to take heed, let no one deceive you. For many will come in my name. Mark says, many will say, I am he. These are the signs, folks, right here in your face. I'm just going to pull them out and bring them to your attention. So Yahushua, he displayed, his, his showed his power on many occasions. There's the precept. Listen to this. And then we're going to break to another video on some people Claiming to be the Messiah. Modern day. Here we go. The Judas tried to set up an earthly kingdom by means of force. Yahushua stated that his kingdom was not of this world. Let's go to the precept. John chapter 18 and verse 36. Let's pull it out. John 18 and verse 36. 
Yahusha answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. This is what he said in front of Pontius Pilate right before the crucifixion. No one believed him. So now you see, I say Jews, the Israelites, the Hebrews. Yeah, they delivered their own. You see, now can you understand there will not be one stone left unturned? Now you see why the temple was destroyed. Why does it need to be still standing when you're doing foolish things in it? You don't really believe. I sent my son there. And if I hadn't sent him there to down the cross, we would be damned eternally. You see? And now this. Put him in your face. People walk with Christ and still didn't believe. You see? But the most crazy part is you'll believe in a false messiah when he said take heed let no one deceive you for many will come in my name saying i am the christ or as mark would say for i am he and deceive many and that's what's been going on for over two thousand years brothers and sisters it's time to wake up and get back to the basics Get back to the truth, study the truth, dissect the truth, break it down. These are the these are the beginning of sorrows, and they've been coming over two thousand years ago. So how long are we gonna be in this phase before the end come? If you go back, what were they doing before the flood of Noah? They said he was a crazy man. You building a ship. On dry land. You see? They were married. They were marrying. They was giving into marriage. They were drinking. They were doing all kinds of things. Is that not what's going on now? And then what happened? The flood came. And it was all over. It rained 40 days and 40 nights. Eight people survived. Because they took heed to the signs. Noah and his family, Shammai, they listened to the voice of Yahuwah. They took heed to wisdom. They live righteously. So when you live righteously, what's going to happen? You're going to be able to hear from the Ruach. When she say do something, you're going to do it. You're not going to question it. Not one bit. You're going to be obedient to the word of Yah. This right here. So Matthew 24, the whole chapter is very relevant. And we're going to touch on each one of these sorrows. And you tell me. At the end, either at the each of each 13 of these. Are we here or not? We have been for thousands of years. Now. Let's pull out this video. All right, so first we touched on, take heed, let no one deceive you, for many will come in my name, saying I'm the Christ. I gave you precepts of two people back then, Theodos, an Egyptian guy. They didn't give his name. But they rose up, got followers, like Christ did, claiming to be the Messiah, the Judas even went up on the Mount of Olives saying that he was going to conquer Rome. He got stoned. Now, he died. Didn't get up. But what did Yahushua do? He got crucified and rose on the third day. So which one is the Messiah? You see, he already didn't conquer death. The beginning of sorrows 
Matthew chapter 24 has been going on for centuries. And it's not going to continue to be sorrows, just like the days of Noah. That time is going to come and boom. It's going to be nothing left. Let's get into this video. Let me cue it up. I want you to look at this. Now, this is modern day people saying they're the Christ and this and that. How blasphemous this is. Pay attention. Let's cue it up. I want you to pay attention to this video here. Let's get into it. The matter of faith. There have been men, many of them, who claim to be a new Messiah. And tonight we're going to meet three of them, including one in the faraway Philippines who has amassed a flock, he says, numbers in the millions. Poor people who give what little they have to the man they believe is the second coming of Jesus. Bill Weir journeyed there to meet him. Throughout the Bible, prophets, angels, and Jesus himself all promised that the Son of God would... Re Do not take into this image. This is not Christ. This is not what is described in the Bible. But this is who they want you to worship. You see? All lies. Pay attention to this. Return to create heaven on earth. And throughout the ages, billions of Christians have wondered, when? But what if the second coming is here, now? There are a number of would-be messiahs who claim exactly that, and few are more physically convincing than a former Russian traffic cop named Sergei Torop. In the woods of rural Siberia, he is known as Vissarion, the teacher and around 5,000 disciples live around him, growing their own food and feasting on his every word. And my whole body was trembling. The trembling is not coming again. <laughs> well, it's a, a very emotional to me. Meanwhile, in London, David Shaler says he is the true Lord of Lords, but unlike Vissarion, no one believes him. That doesn't bother me because I was chosen by God. The former British intelligence agent says his body was filled with the spirit of Jesus in 2007, a conviction which intensifies on a visit to Jerusalem. We're in the Church of Holy Sepulchre, and this behind me is supposed to be the tomb of Christ. Well, I'm Christ, I'm not in the tomb, I'm not dead yet. But with no support, he lives in a squatter's camp outside London. By agreement with Jesus, I don't ask for money off people. If you're the Messiah, you shouldn't be asking for money, you should have faith that God will look after you. Prove to me that you are a son of God! But that is not a sentiment shared by Pastor Apollo Quibiloy, the most successful of the world's self-labeled saviors. The official coming of the Son of God was in April 13, 2005. He was an obscure evangelist from the rural Philippines until 2005 when he announced that God had appointed him Christ on earth, his reward for a pure life. Sinful thoughts, uh, anger, lust, any of those things, you don't experience those on a daily basis? As a human being? Yes. I have all, already overcome all of those. There is no apocalypse in Kibaloi's message, no rapture or final judgment. Instead, he preaches that he is the model of Christianity. And as more people follow his example, God will gradually turn the earth back into the Garden of Eden. Do you perform miracles? For me, the greatest miracle is the changing of that spirit within. But healing the sick, the manifestations oh, yes, of Jesus' yes. powers, you, you, you're able to we do are, that? We have, we have healing. We you have are healing. healing and miracles happening. After taking his place as the appointed son, Kibaloi's ministry has exploded. He claims to reach six million followers with his satellite TV network, numerous publications, private jet, and personal helicopter. All the better to avoid the bumpy road and impoverished villages that lead to the walled compound he calls the Kingdom of Jesus Christ. Here is his five-bedroom home, surrounded by manicured gardens of imported grass. So this is your Garden of Eden? This is what we call the Garden of Eden Restored. 
It's easy to see why this claim resonates in a country where 30 million endure crushing poverty with open hearts. This family lives just down the hill, next to the dump where Pastor Kibaloy's garbage is burned. If you could be anything in the world, what would you want to be? Yeah. Go to heaven. Go to heaven. To them, heaven really could exist inside Kibaloy's gates, and it's why hundreds line up to carry his parasol. All the workers who toil in the grinding heat of the kingdom are volunteers, here to glorify the Father. Do you get paid for this? Uh, Juju tells me he gets $40 a week to feed his family. Minimum wage. And like the rest of the kingdom, he's expected to give 10% back to Kibaloy. This may be the most beautiful spot in the Philippines, mm -hmm. and it's paid for by people who live on $2 a day. So how do you justify your, your lifestyle? I mean, your watch could probably feed 100 families for a month. If this is not God's will for me to have these things I have, yeah. you can take it away. It is God's will that, 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 that we follow. If it is God's will for us to live like this, you know, you can have a broken heart looking at me, but what can you do? But they get their understanding of the will of God from you. Yeah. And this, this nice young man wouldn't be holding this umbrella if he didn't believe the things you say. For us here, we see everything as a ministry. My talent is to preach. My talent is to be a leader. Not everyone can become a preacher or have been given a talent like me to go and lead the six million people. Right. But Jesus, when he, when he walked the earth, according to the Bible, uh, lived among lepers and prostitutes. I live among, among them. You have a private jet. <laughs> I live among them. Before I had the private You're jet. You're in a walled compound with mansions. We, before this, I lived among the, these people. Like for example, that jet that you're talking about. Do you know that in 1983, I had a revelation of that jet? That the Lord is going to give me that. Yeah. It is him who gave me that. If it is not his will, how can I afford that? Well. <laughs> Kibaloy has been accused of kidnapping and brainwashing by the parents of at least one of his followers, but he was never charged. He insists that anyone is free to leave his flock and seal their fate for eternity. Will they go to hell? It's up to them. They know that. So that's your will, you know. If you want to go to hell, no one will stop you. If you want to go to heaven and follow this way, no one will stop you too. Come work with you. Yeah. There are three possibilities here. You are so, either the son of God, or you're delusional, or you're a very successful con man. I respect your point of view, but I resent what you said that uh, your followers will say, I'm a con man with a speaking ability that I've tried to con people. That is not who I am. I'm not trying to con people. I am speaking the truth. Skepticism is a cross all modern messiahs must bear. In Siberia, Vissarion has also been accused of mind control, but there's not enough evidence to try him. And David Shaler? Well, there are fewer legal headaches for prophets without followers, but still plenty of moments to bring a so-called son of God back to earth. Do you think you're Jesus? Sorry? Are you Jesus? I am Jesus, yes. Me not. <laughs> I'm Bill Weir for Nightline in Davao, Philippines. Can we have some quiet? <laughs> you know, even the little girl knew. This is what Yahusha was warning us about. Had to bring it out, folks. You got to see that this is what's going on around you. And they got millions of followers, this guy in the Philippines. Let's read it again. And you tell me if we're not in the sorrow stage. You tell me that what Yahushua said, he said, take heed, let no one deceive you. For many will come in my name saying they are the Christ. And will what? Deceive many. Is this not what's going on? I just showed a short clip. I got several, but I only wanted to show you this one. 
So you had Theudas, the Egyptian guy back then, over 2,000 years ago, deceiving people. You got these people. First of all, the image that they're putting out there is not the image of God. He's not blonde haired and blue eyes. Show me in the Bible where you can find that. That's not him. That's Caesar Borgia from Rome that was painted and you're worshiping him. And then millions of people are worshiping these guys. You see the deception that Yahushua said to watch out for? Why do you think they took the Bibles back then? And they didn't want the Israelites to know the truth. Because when you're in the truth, it's power that comes with it. Very sad. But true. From the both of these videos, this modern day, this made ABC News. Even the reporter saying, well, well you know, it's either a scam or... I mean, you know, you living up here on the witch call, is that what Christ would do? Do you actually think that's the way he would live among his people in a mansion, pedicure garden, while his followers are starving, suffering? You're a false messiah. He would never do that. The beginning of sorrows. Then and now, let's get back to the commentary. Short, but very effective here. One moment. The beginning of sorrows. He warned us. He said, he let no one deceive you. You see? Now, that was a clip of the now, guys. Let's get back in the commentary. We're going to wrap this thing on up because we got 13 parts. I want you guys to enjoy it. I don't want to wear you out on the first one, but I want you to stay tuned to the next one because it gets better. So now let's continue to talk about the Judas back then. So now he was claiming to do what this guy is doing now. This clip that I showed you. The Judas and Yahushua were both killed by the Romans. However, Theudas stayed dead and his followers disbanded. Yahushua rose again and his followers are still going strong. Part one of When Will the End Be? These were the beginning of sorrows. And we're going to go back to Matthew 24. We're going to end this Bible study. And I want you to stay tuned to part two. Let's start reading at verse four. And Yahushua answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. I just showed you that one. Part two. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that no one, see that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Three, for nations will rise against nations. Four, and kingdoms against kingdoms. And there will be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. All of these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. That's eight. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Nine. And then they will be offended. Then, and then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Ten. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. Eleven. And become, and because lawlessness will abound, 12, and here's 13, the love of many will grow cold. Now, as I read those 13 signs, tell me, is that not what the world is going through now? 
and then. Food for thought. When will the end be? We're living in it. It's not coming. It's already here. Part two. Stay tuned. We're going to touch on the wars and rumors of wars in part two. I don't even have to explain that to you. Look what's going on over there now. All right. So let's sum it up. The temple destroyed. Yahushua said there will not be one stone left unturned because they're doing ridiculous things there. Then the disciples said, well, wow, this is a beautiful place. What do you mean this is going to be destroyed? But teacher, I got some questions for you. Tell us when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of this age? First one he said, take heed, let no one deceive you. For many will come in my name, saying that I'm the Christ and will deceive many. We just touched that in part one. Let's wake up, people. Let's pray. Our Father, Father Abba Yahuwah, we thank you for this day, Father. We thank you for your word. We thank you for standing us to our feet this morning, giving us the opportunity to give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. And Father, as we get through this series here in Matthew chapter 24, I ask that you will lay an anointing upon me like never before to stir up some people out there to pay attention to these signs of sorrow. Father, we repent of our sins, wash us, cleanse us, and make us whole again. Yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we shall feel no evil, for you are with us. Your rod and your staff comfort us. But Yahuwah, your word says in Psalm 94, a thousand and ten thousand, but none shall fall upon, upon thee. And I ask that you will give your followers Give the people that's paying attention to this broadcast here the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding to read the precepts and to get it and run with it. Father, we thank you for your word. We ask in these end times and these end days that you protect your people. Shema, O Israel. The Lord, our God, is one. We thank you for your son, Yahushua that gave his life on the cross so that we will have life and have it more abundantly. We thank you. We give you all the glory, honor, and the praise. In Yahushua's name we pray. Amen. Stay tuned. Part two is coming. Wars and women's wars. The water for tuning in. Y'all bless.